you must weep, then weep. I shall be here for you. Are you already past it? You are unflappable. I will give you that much. In that case, I will remain silently supportive. You are right that we must keep moving ever onward. You gotta keep yourself active during tough times, Professor. Even if it seems impossible, that's how I got through it when I lost my parents. If you need help with anything, just come and see me. Eating and training are my specialties. I'm not even close to being strong enough. I mean, Gerald was so much stronger than me, but even he... That's enough. I can't dwell on the past. There's no way to know what my future holds, but I do know one thing. Whatever happens, I have to make my own way in this world. I have to keep pushing so I can grow even stronger. Professor, I'm so sorry about what happened to Gerald. No, of course my sorrow is nothing compared to yours. The Knights are even now searching for our enemy's whereabouts. They are to report back the moment they find something. If you desire revenge, Professor, you can count me in. It's not luck, it's fate. Sorry, but victory is mine. It's not luck, it's fate. Sorry, but victory is mine. <laughs> Never underestimate an outsider. shame what happened to Gerald. I am sorry. There are no words. Leave some flowers on his grave for me. just reunited. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sure this is even harder on you, but I just can't... I can't believe... <laughs> professor. Hey, Professor. Got a minute? Look, I'm sorry I snapped at you. I didn't mean to lose my temper. I was rude to you. I should have known better. Huh, I thought you might say that. In that way, you're just like Captain Gerald. 
You accept other people. You don't let petty details get under your skin. Well, when I was a kid, I kind of latched onto him. I've been calling myself his apprentice ever since. He spent some time in the village I grew up in. Actually, you weren't with him back then. Why not? Huh. Maybe he left you with a relative or something. Anyway, back then, Gerald's job was to deal with poachers. Well, they were bandits, but we called them poachers. Nobody in the village could stand up to them. But your dad, he took them on like it was nothing. I was so impressed. All I could think was how amazing mercenaries were. I'd lived in that tiny village my whole life. So to me, Captain Gerald was nothing short of a legend. So I went right up to him and I told him I was going to be his apprentice. He didn't stick around long after that, but he did teach me a lot while he was with us. Tactics, strategy, training routines. It was all so new and exciting. So after he left, I kept at it, kept training, just like he taught me. Me too. I always planned to meet him again once I became a top-tier mercenary. But I'm just glad I got to see him, to thank him properly and all. I've spent my whole life working to become a great mercenary like your father. There were so many times when I wanted to ask his advice, but I couldn't. I just had to make do. That's how I've made it this far. Just hard work all on my own. But then you come along, and it's like you don't appreciate Captain Gerald at all, or how lucky you were to have him around your whole life. No, oh, it still really bothers me. You might be his kid, but I'm still his best apprentice. Got it? I'm so sorry. I never quite know what to say at times like these. Just don't push yourself too hard too soon. It's okay to allow yourself to be sad right now. Losing someone dear to you, well, each loss is unique, but it's a feeling I know very well. That said, Professor, I... Oh no. Professor, thank you for all you have done for us. Nothing to report today. <laughs> hey! away. My deepest condolences. I knew him long before I ever even met you. He was always so much fun to be around. It's such a loss. <sighs> I trained with Gerald just the other day. Why? Why did he have to go and die? It's too awful. He didn't deserve it. Do you have time for a request? Oh. Professor, I um I brought some flowers for Gerald. It's the least I can do. Sometimes I feel like all I do is run away. Anyway, I'll go lay them out. slipped quietly into the vault and rummaged about, looking for anything we might find useful. There is a group of people who want to kill us, after all. What? This is no time for asking permission. I learned long ago that one can ask permission or forgiveness. It is rarely useful to request the former. Still, it appears the knights have already taken everything useful. There were crest-related objects I thought might be worth studying, so... <sighs> there you go again with that stern look. Of course, I'll put them back when I'm done, assuming they bear no additional use. Yes, 
dancer, I've sung lyrics lamenting death many times on stage. But when something like this happens in real life, I'm lost. I don't know what to say, but I do know this much. Sir Gerald must have been very proud to have you as his child. Pull through this, because you're so strong, Professor. Best to stay calm during such tumultuous and upsetting time. We don't know the nature of our enemies. If we underestimate them, anything could happen. I agree they must be defeated, but I also feel we must approach this with prudence. The other night, I... I had the honor of sharing a drink with Gerald. <laughs> he was pretty tactless, honestly. He could be blunt at times, but... He always looked like such a proud, happy father whenever he spoke of you. Professor! I'm so glad you're okay, Professor. I was so worried! Oh, Professor! He must be starving! Mercy and I made some sweets for you. We were thinking that if you were to eat something sweet, it might help you feel better. <laughs> Baking sweets is my specialty. I'm sure they'll do the trick. Hmm. Professor, please lend us your ears. Ferdinand is saying impossible thing. I do not see what is impossible about it. All I said was that if you want to go back to Bridget, you probably can. You are... The Empire's guests, so to speak. They cannot afford for something bad to happen to you. There would be a diplomatic incident. Someone close to us has turned up dead. So one could argue that you are not safe here anymore. You were already told. I am learning here, from the Academy. What are you thinking, Professor? I am not returning to home until I have grabbed my goal. I will not be listening to the words of Ferdinand. No, look, I did not mean to pressure you. Apologies for the misunderstanding. Professor? What happened to Gerald? It's terrible. If there's anything I can do, simply ask. Even if what you desire is revenge, I'll gladly lend you. We can't let them get away with this. Teach, I see the storm in your eyes has passed. You're looking much better. I've been reading Gerald's diary. The baby he mentions. That's you, isn't it? I can't understand about half of what's written here, but Gerald really cherished you. That much is clear. There is no one here who has not heard tales of Gerald's valor. We have suffered a most dear loss. I do not know what the enemy's aim was, but I do know this. After what they have done, we cannot suffer them to live. If there is anything I can do to ensure that justice is brought swiftly, you need only give the word. Huh? Professor, people 
are saying horrible things about Marianne. They're saying she's friends with the bad guys. If I hear someone say that, I'll... Leave it alone, Hilda. It doesn't matter. That would be the quickest way to resolve this. Come on, Marianne. Let's give it our all. Dark expressions don't suit you, Professor. But I'm... Well, I'm glad to see you out in the world again. It seems this month will be a quiet one around here. There aren't many knights around to liven things up. Most of the knights are gone, seeking out the enemy. Isn't that a bit much? I agree it's important, but is it a good idea to neglect the safety of the monastery? What do you think, Professor? I agree. We can send some knights after our enemies, but so many? It makes the church seem reckless. <sighs> um, Professor? Do you think we'll still be able to graduate if dangerous things keep happening around here? Who even knows? I'm worried. I hope that all the students and professors will be there to celebrate at the graduation ceremony. When I heard that Monica was with the enemy, I was surprised by how unsurprised I was. Something was just off about her. It's hard to explain. That said, whenever she had free time, she was always hanging around with Edelgard. I wonder if Edelgard is also... Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just being paranoid. Please ignore me. Just Tomas, but Monica, too. We can't be sure who to trust anymore, can we? Who are these people, really? What do they want? Professor. Oh, goddess, hear my prayer. Please receive this beloved person. When the cold rain washes the body, when the bird and wolf announce the dawn, receive them into your blue blood. Receive them into a twinkling star. That's a morning scripture from the Church of Saros. Lady Rhea taught it to me. I pray that Gerald is happy in the next world. Professor, I'm scared. I feel that I don't understand the world. How could something like that happen to Gerald? He was so strong. You're inspiring, Professor. I'll do my best. So sorry. The failing was clearly our own. We didn't notice the enemy's invasion. And now Gerald. I... I apologize. There is nothing I can say to atone for our sins. Professor, please do not let your guard down even among the people of the monastery. There is no way to know where another enemy may be hiding. Monica von Ox. There is nothing suspicious in her past that would suggest this change of character. Her transformation must have something to do with her disappearance last year. Sadly, that is the extent of my knowledge. I wonder who kidnapped her, and why. Your father. Now more than ever, 
Do I understand how very lucky I am that you were able to save me? Professor, I deeply appreciate what you have done. Thank you. If there is anything at all I can do in return, please tell me, okay? I've never been much for condolences. Hey, you. You've lost someone very dear to you. I'm so... You have my sympathy. Manuela and I can take on some of your workload this month. We can't do all the teaching, but at least we can lighten the load for you. I've always seen strength in your eyes. I know you'll recover. You're a very strong person. I have something rather uncomfortable to discuss. It's about the weapon that killed Gerald. Will you listen? It was a dagger, but I know enough to know it wasn't an ordinary dagger. It wasn't made of iron or steel because, well, because whatever it was, the wound it left wasn't normal. Who could make a blade like that, do you figure? I wonder who they were. Is something hiding just behind that book? That ring! I have seen it before. Ah, I know. Gerald showed that ring to you beside a grave. Do you recall? He said he wished for you to have that ring one day. That means it's yours. He also said that you should gift that ring to someone special. Professor, how are you holding up? I know how heavily grief weighs upon one's heart. I lost my mother some time ago. It was... Forgive me my moment of weakness. Even all these years later, I cannot recall that time without feeling the pain as if it were brand new. Just know that I am praying for your mind and your heart to find peace. First Tomas, and now Monica. I do have a theory, though I admit it is nothing more than speculation. Both Tomas and Monica have each gone missing at one time or another. It was reported that when Monica returned from her disappearance, she began to act like a completely different person. As if, perhaps, the real Monica had been killed and replaced by an imposter. Thinking of it like that, it is possible that this Solon had been impersonating Tomas for some time. How they managed such a convincing change of appearance, though, I still do not understand. What's that? What? Captain Gerald's been killed? I can't believe it. From all I'd heard about the man, I thought he was indestructible. He was so strong. What could have possibly... Uh, forgive me. I shouldn't speculate. What's that? Hey you, listen up. I've got something to report. But maybe now isn't the time? You seem down. Got something on your mind? I hope you know I'm here for you. If you ever have your own stuff to report, that's what friends are for. Unless it's about money, in which case, I'm busy. Okay, this month feels different, doesn't it? Garrick mocks all tense, like the whole place might explode. This is why I've kept to myself all these years. I don't want to be anywhere near whatever's about to happen.
What do you require? Now let me see. I see this one has gained some experience. Now let me see. I see this one has gained some exp- Now let me see. Marvelous. This one should be proud of their growth. Now let me see. Ah yes, this one's growth is going- Now let me see. Marvelous. This one should be proud of their growth. Now let me see. Marvelous. This one should be proud of their growth. Now let me see. Marvelous. This one should be proud. Now let me see. Marvelous. This one should be proud of their growth. Now let me see. Marvelous. This one should be proud of their growth. Now let me see. Ah yes, this one's growth is going quite- Now let me see. Marvelous. This one should be proud of their growth. Now let me see. I see this one has gained- Fare thee well. up and at him again, yeah? Good on you. No use crying over the past and all. Balthus, have some sensitivity. Who knows what the poor deer is going through right now? That poor deer can hear you, you know. Talking about someone like they're not there. How cold can you get? Uh, a fair point. Please, Professor, forgive my indiscretion. You have my condolences. Remember, the first step to healing is a hefty dose of revenge. Get out there and get to it. Hmm. Hey, pal. Ball that ah. Remember. Yep, that's mine. Hey, pal. Ball that ah. Remember. Friend, Gerald raised you, yeah? He was all you had. You must be feeling a lot right now. When a parent dies, it really leaves a mark. So feel what you need to, no matter how that looks. But know that your inner fire will keep you moving ahead through even the hardest times. Gerald, when a, but know that Gerald's written when a parent, but know that you're. Nah, that's not. Yeah. Hey, it seems like you're having a hard time. Not that I can really understand what you're going through. I know that this is painful, but don't lose hope for the future, okay? Someday, you'll be able to accept what's happened. And in the meantime, you have plenty of friends here to support you. Me included. Whoa. I was sure I'd never see this thing again. Maybe <laughs> with something that said, I wonder. It's it. most of them, isn't that a bit? Nothing about I'm just losing that said. No. 
Yes, that's mine. Thank you very much. Did this turn up? Thank you for getting. Ice? What? Still, <laughs> there you. Oh, thank you. I gave up hope of ever... Professor, I've saw but when some... But, Sir Gerald... How did you know I lost this? Thank you for bringing... Seems most of the isn't that a bit That's mine. Thank you for fun. It seems most isn't that a It seems most of the isn't that a bit Join me for some training so I might like to It seems most of isn't that a bit So much. I've been looking everywhere. I'm sorry. Oh, that's mine. Thanks so much for finding it. To both took it was reported as if thinking of how they managed. Yes, this is mine. Thank you for returning it. turn up. Thank you for getting it back to me. I wonder...
really? Excuse me, Professor. I know. I forgive me. Just know that. This is not mine. Yes, that is surely mine. I appreciate. Teach, I've been re- I can't under- But Gerald- You found it! Hi. Yes. Professor? Professor, a pleasure to see you. I was here for confessional, confessing my foolishness. While I'm at it, may I confess something to you too? I realize what a burden I've been, on you I mean. After every breakup, I neglect my work, and I know how that affects you. I'm completely worthless as a woman. Can you imagine how that feels? Oh, I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. I just know it. You think so too, don't you? I'd rather you disagree, even if you don't mean it. Lie to a woman when she's down and out, yeah? What's wrong with me? It's not my looks. I'm still gorgeous. Or am I? Be honest. Do I look old? No, not possible. I'm the songstress who swept the Empire off its feet. Men professed their love for me hourly. It can't be my looks. I knew I was right. I'd be in real trouble if I weren't this beautiful. Oh no, if the problem isn't my looks, and they are not the problem, then it must be... what? My personality? I know you're trying to find a way to say it gently, but you think there's a problem, don't you? I suppose I can be a bit unkempt. I do have a short temper, and I may be a little lazy, sometimes, but I've always heard fellas you know, like a woman with a few flaws, seems to me there are plenty of flawed girls who have landed themselves a good man. So maybe, my trouble is I'm not imperfect enough. Do you think I could use a few more flaws? Are you saying I'm perfect as I am? Come now, you'll make me blush. <laughs> Professor? Some... Discord. I 
cannot stand it. I do wish everyone would listen to one another. I can't sing very loud. This is the I This is so my pet. Sounds like someone's having fun. Maybe it's coming from the greenhouse. That was really fun, Bernie. Good thing I found such an out-of-the-way spot to play. Only the pretty flowers hurt me here. Isn't that right, little flower? You're the only one who heard, aren't you? What did you think? That was amazing! <laughs> Why is your voice so deep? What? I'm no flower. No, Raphael, you heard it all, didn't you? I did! What kind of instrument was that? I could hear it all the way over at the training grounds. It was great. I didn't know you could play. All the way from the training grounds? <laughs> That's right. Then I came here to tell you how good you sounded. Good? No. No, I'm on to you. First, you flatter me. Then you get me to perform on stage in front of everyone to humiliate me! Uh... No? But that's a great idea. Everyone should be able to hear your music. <laughs> I knew it! Monster! I won't fall victim to your schemes! I don't know what just happened, but I think I might have scared her. Sure, I just had it a moment ago. Um. Ah, ghost! Actually. The goddess, protect me! I. Uh, huh? Um, 
Ash, does this key belong to you? I found it by the door. Marianne! I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, that's mine. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And my apologies for scaring you. No, I'm the one who should be sorry. Kind of ridiculous, mistaking a friend for a ghost. No, that's okay. I guess I do look like one. No, of course you don't. It's just I, um, in the dark with your head down like that and, and with your hair covering your eyes, I... Uh, Does that make me look scary? No, oh, please stop. I'm sorry that I look so ghastly. Why not just lift your head up a little? Up? You mean like this? Yes, that's so much better. With some light on your face, you don't look scary at all. That's great. You look completely normal now. Actually, you look pretty cute. What did you say? Hmm? No, nothing. Uh, just keep your head up and smile. I promise you'll never be mistaken for a ghost again. Keep my head up and smile? I'm sorry, but I don't think I can. What? Hey, hey wait! Uh, was it something I said? <sighs> I should head back. Finished with your training, Miss Marianne? Oh, P Professor Hanneman. Yes, I've just finished training for the day. You have merely completed the exercises assigned to you, yes? Nothing more? Or am I wrong? Yes. I'm sorry. I should have done more. No, no, please. You've done as you were asked. Quite solid work, child. I simply wish to ask a question. You possess a crest, do you not? I... <sighs> when you entered the officer's academy, your father submitted a request to the monastery, as well as a significant donation. Your father asked that your crest not be confirmed under any circumstances. At first, I thought he did not want the world to know that his daughter bore no crest. In your father's position as a newly minted noble, it would be most advantageous for his daughter to possess a crest, you see. However, I am now certain I was wrong. I believe you do, in fact, possess a crest of some sort. How did you find out? I have been called the father of crestology. Which is a bit of an ostentatious title, I admit. However, a brief period of observation allows me to hazard a usually accurate guess as to whether a body houses a crest or not. With the knowledge of your father's actions and my own observations, I come to you with a warning. As a crest bearer, you are guaranteed to have certain talent. It is prudent to study your crest diligently to ensure your safe mastery of these talents, whatever they may prove to be. No, no. I have no talent. Oh, yes. You do. No matter how hard you may try to hide it, my sight is keener than that. And what I see, others will eventually notice as well. Those who hold power must wield it in the service of their fellow man, Miss Marianne. I believe that is true, whether you are peasant or noble. And doubly true, I would say, for those with crests. Or do you think I'm wrong? I... Uh... On principle alone, it is a waste to allow a rare talent to remain dormant. I would like very much to advise you to aid your understanding of your crest. Will you accept my offer? N no, I refuse. That is regrettable. A veritable tragedy, Miss Marianne. Professor, I'm so bl oh, prof we were thinking. Oh, Professor, I have a small request for you. I'd love it if you would add me to your class. I can just tell that studying under you every day would be such a treat. Wow, really? Thank you so much. I'm so happy. I hope to learn a lot from you.
quick. It's still got room. Rings. Rings. Let me ask you something. Yeah, okay, I see that. Chatterbox. Let's give it our all. Let's both do... Not too bad. I feel like I get it now. I work to find getting. I'm looking sharp. Learning these things gives me great difficult. Everyone should sing.
I'm pleased to have been invited. I adore this. Thank you for preparing my favorite tea. I am grateful. I sense great potential in you. You possess something extraordinary. It will be nice to gain a better understanding of each other. This crown is rather elaborate, but it has been passed down through generations of archbishops. How quickly this delightful time has passed. However, we must return to our work. Nighty night, sleepyhead. Whew, guess that's it. Can't let lowlifes like you into Garrig Mock. Nobody likes troublemakers. Trust me. What the? Oh, it's you. Don't sneak up on people. It's rude. But we can discuss your lacking manners another time. Why are you here? You following me, pal? Guess I can't fault you for that, since you seem to have been mopping up enemies without me knowing it. She really thinks I'm gonna try to reclaim my title. <laughs> she clearly doesn't know me too well, yet she keeps sending fools my way like the stubborn shrew she is. That's my stepmother for you. Shocking. Remember when I told you my little bro inherited House Albrecht after I left? Well, he's my half-bro. And his mother is devoted, to say the least. She'd do anything for him. Sadly, he had the nerve to be born without a crest. And here I stand with a rare one swimming in my veins. She's convinced I'll return one day to take back my title by force. Completely off her rocker, that one. <laughs> if only that were humanly possible. Besides, I refuse to concede any more than I already have. It's best for everyone that I take the brunt of her malice. I can handle it just fine. If I wasn't around, she'd shift her beady gaze to my dad. Maybe even to my mom, who fled the house a while back. Or maybe my little bro would become the target of her good intentions. Can't allow that to happen. And that's the bottom line. Long story short, you should keep your distance from me. If that assassin's dagger took you out, everyone here would fall to pieces. How would I explain that? That's... Uh, that's some big talk, pal. So, you'll protect me too, will you? To think someone who can keep up with the exalted king of grappling would say such a swell thing. I'm a betting man, so I'll take the bait. Let's see if you really intend to protect me. Or if those were just pretty words.